I argue that the biggest problem with low back pain care in this country is not giving patients a diagnosis or at a minimum, an understanding of what's going on with their low back pain. What is causing it? I understand that some people might think diagnosis is too strong of a word because it's hard to understand all the structures in the low back, but I think clinicians should be at least attempting to give a diagnosis. I offer a diagnosis that is a hypothetical at worst and concrete at best for my patients with low back pain, but because so many people are going to mainstream doctors, mainstream orthopedic specialists who call their low back pain nonspecific, patients are leaving care without a good understanding of at least how their back works and at best understanding what went wrong and how to prevent it in the future. The reason this idea of nonspecific low back pain I think is so insidious is because we do have research showing that acute or recent onset of low back pain for the majority of patients will subside. The pain will go away with or without treatment. And that's why studies show that there's not a great difference between different types of treatments for low back pain. Of course, that's because they're looking at the barometer of reducing or eliminating low back pain, which we know will go away with natural history. Just like someone who has knee pain, in the majority of cases, it will go away on its own, whether it's due to curtailing activity or not. Most people who have low back pain, the pain will eventually go away. Sometimes it's because they do change how they sit or they add more walking or they eliminate deadlifts and squats at the gym. Whatever it may be, that pain will go away. But the rubber meets the road with the fact that studies also show pain tends to recur. And that means, in my mind, the disorder has recurred. And because people don't have an understanding of how to manage their spines when they leave possibly successful care or they leave their own episode in the past where their pain went away, that's why it tends to recur. Think about it this way. If a patient is drinking water from a dirty well and gets really sick and the person comes to your office and you can rehydrate them and get them through that emergency or acute process of dehydration from vomiting and um, diarrhea because of the waterborne illness, but you don't teach them that it's because they took water from that well, it's going to happen again. That's why for patients with low back pain that I see, for most patients, we're doing repeated movement testing to find out if the problem is in fact mechanical. And because it's mechanical, there's a certain mechanic, there's a certain movement or two that can really help that patient's lumbar spine stay good and minimize the chance of this happening again. For most patients or all patients actually, I tell them it's likely that this mechanical problem will happen again just because our lives are not really conducive to mobile healthy spines in modern day America. But by doing repeated movement testing, I find that a lot of people just need to change the balance of flexion and extension in their lumbar spines in their lives to keep it with full range of motion and therefore less likely susceptible to another episode of pain due to a mechanical problem with joint mobility. For some people, they need to kind of stay on top of side glides or rotation and flexion. There are various presentations, but the bulk of people just need to really assess how much flexion and extension they're getting through their spines. So if people are being treated with a diagnosis of nonspecific low back pain, perhaps they're doing stabilization, perhaps they're even getting joint mobility or joint mobilizations, strengthening, maybe some electric gadgets, maybe heat or ice, and the pain goes away, but they don't understand what's going on, it's no surprise that it comes back. One problem I think with that standard of care treatment, which I used to do prior to learning McKenzie's principles and therefore implementing them, is that I wasn't making sure that people got their full range of motion back. Yes, I could measure if their straight leg raise or if their plank was good, if other non-range of motion parameters were good. I could test for that. Otherwise, like sometimes hip flexion returning to five out of five, but I wasn't really making sure they had all of their normal, normal lumbar flexion or all of their normal lumbar extension or side glide left or right. That's because I didn't understand the concept of how to really find someone's normal range of motion. Range of motion varies slightly from patient to patient. There are norms, but by no means was I restoring people's extension. And by no means was I talking to them a lot about how to maintain extension, especially if you're sitting in flexion a lot. So I offer that most of these problems are not non-specific. They are specific and they have to do with how the joints are working. Of course, there are other diagnoses for low back pain. And in a small cohort of patients, there are red flag um, diagnoses for low back pain, cancers, infections, fractures, kidney disease, and other non-musculoskeletal problems. But those make up such a small percentage that the real proposition of low back pain in this country is what people call nonspecific. So try to find a clinician who can offer you an idea of what's going on. At a minimum, make sure you understand what your low back, low back range of motion is upon completing your treatment. You need to make sure you have your normal mobility, just like if you were fixing a knee problem or a hip problem or an elbow problem, you would need to be taught by your clinician how much range of motion is normal for your particular knee, hip, elbow, or lumbar spine. I argue that if you can understand 
how much range of motion your joint has and how to keep it, you're on a really good path to understanding how to keep it from hurting in the future.